here in Northeast Ohio back in 1803. James and Danny Heaton found the ore that was lined in Yellow Creek. They built a blast furnace. Hello, I'm Steve Evans. Business Daily is a bit different today. I've been in Youngstown in that politically important corner of Ohio, next to Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Youngstown is the symbol of Rust Belt America. It's got flattened wasteland where blast furnaces and steelworks once stretched for miles. This is a symbol of one America, not Silicon Valley or Wall Street, but manufacturing America. Youngstown was immortalised too by Bruce Springsteen, who wrote a song about the town's decline. For the podcast, we can't play you that song because of the rules involved, but we are playing you the voices of Youngstown. It used to be when I first hired in, Along this one river to call the Mahoning River, there was 30 miles of steel mills from end to end. You couldn't tell where one started and the other began. And if you got in the argument with your boss and uh, they canned you, they threw you out the door, before uh, the next shift you could probably have a better paying job. And that's not going to happen anymore. The steelmaker's tale there. This program will bring you a portrait of part of America at this great turning point as the economy falls and politics changes. These will be some of the voices of America, the shopkeeper, the mayor, the man who's lost his home, the poor family learning to save, and the young girl who once twinkled and danced for Franklin Delano Roosevelt 75 years ago in the Great Depression. I'm Dorothy McLaughlin. I'm a woman. I'm 85 years old, young. My purpose in life is to help other people. How does the economy look to you now? How does Youngstown look to you now? It's a shame. It looks like we're going to go right back in it again. Uh, 1929, when that was the end, and, and we lost our house in Struthers and had a beautiful home. And we had to go down by the railroad tracks where we had to get coal from the train. And so my brothers would get on top of the train cars, which we lived right by the tracks in a shack down there. And uh, they would get on top of the because they had to slow down to go through the town of Struthers. They came from Youngstown and had to go through the little town. So they would throw off the coal, and my twin sister and I, and then we were only about six, seven years old. We'd have gunny sacks, and we would put the coal in the gunny sacks. And then after the train went by, my brothers would get off, and some of the times we got caught. So I remember my mom didn't have enough money for my twin sister and I to have a pair of shoes, but she had went to a sale, and they had. Uh, it was close to summer, and she told us we'd go on our bare feet but to go to church. So she got us a pair of sandals, but they were high heels. She cut the high heels off, and the shoes were like mini mouses up in the air. And I can remember having underclothes and clothes made of, of feed sacks because we used to have some chickens and stuff like that. But today is nothing like that. They're all losing their jobs now. When the money runs out, what are we going to do? We're all going to be on in line like we used to be. I hope we're not going into it. I hope we're not going into it because I got a little bit of money. I'm living by myself, and I, I am in bad shape because I just got over colon cancer stage four. What if I get sick again? And they'll refuse me at the hospital or anything because I have a little bit of hospitalization, but not enough. And you danced for yes. FDR. <laughs> yes. In 1933? Mm-hmm. As a girl, little girl. Yeah, he was coming from Cleveland to Pittsburgh, and he was on a train. So he had a whistle stop in Youngstown. My twin sister and I tap danced for President uh, Roosevelt. Thank you very much indeed. You're well, more than welcome. You're more than welcome. The American Midwest is more. It's much more than a rust belt. And its economy is more than the sum of past hardships, and I believe this, and I believe it. It won't be easy, but dramatic change can happen. And with honest and efficient government in Washington, 
we can turn things around in this city, and we can make the future of this region even better, even better than the best days of the past. Steve, my name is Henry Nemmons. I'm from the greater Youngstown area. My family, we have uh, 16 Save-A-Lot food stores, which is a, uh, a limited assortment supermarket. And I also have three IGA stores. I did have four, but I recently closed one because of union picketing, uh, hurting my business by 40%. And your father came out from Romania? Yeah, from Fle- Transylvania. Fleeing mm-hmm. poverty in the 20s and set up the business. Absolutely. He believed in the American dream when you come here and work hard and uh, do what you think is right and treat people right. And that was his philosophy and it's my philosophy today. I've been full-time in the grocery business 51 years. What do you make of the Youngstown economy now, particularly as exemplified by that Bruce Springsteen, that mournful Bruce Springsteen song? Well, I don't know. I think the Youngstown economy and surrounding area here is not really maybe as bad as some people make it out to believe. Some people think that the steel mills are going to come back, and they're not going to come back. And, uh, you know, we have to look in other directions. And I truly believe in small business is uh, is the background for our economy to survive and do well. There are two policies on view on this election day. Which one do you think is best for the Youngstown economy? I guess there's one real strong reason why I do not support Obama. And he has made a promise to the unions in the United States that he will make it easier to unionize businesses. When people... Uh, paint the Youngstown economy and the whole Rust Belt economy, if you like, as being finished and bleak, very, very high crime. What do you think is the way out of it? There needs to be more jobs so that small business are the people that create new jobs. I think the government today intrudes too often and too much into small business, and therefore the creation of new jobs is, is not happening as quickly as it should. Of course, uh, you know, in my company, we have uh, full benefits for our employees, and that, of course, is also very costly. And most of uh, what happens today in our economy is that uh, big business gets more breaks and more opportunities than than anyone. They have uh, too many advantages, and I blame both political parties for that. Walmart doesn't have a union. They never have pickets, but yet they pick on someone small like me who is ingrained here in the community and who has given back to this community ever since I've ever lived here. I mean, we give back to everything. People call me, and I've been told many times, one thing wrong with you, Henry Nemmons, is you don't have no in your vocabulary. So you're being squeezed, you, the small shop, the small chain of shops, you're being squeezed by unions on the one side and Walmart and the big supermarkets on the other. Exactly. My name is Jody Odom. I'm from originally from Chicago, Illinois, and now I've been in Youngstown for about 11 years, along with my wife and my three children. Most of the people in our community are looking for more discounts, going to more discount stores. 